Hi everybody, I'm Paul from the Reddick Public Library. Thank you for joining me. You might know me from Laboratory, our weekly hands-on science program at the library. Today we're going to be doing some hands-on science activities here, and we're going to be posting our videos weekly to our YouTube channel, so check that out. Today we're going to be doing four different experiments, and our science topic today is soapy science, the science of soap, water, and surface tension. Today we're going to be trying four different experiments. The first experiment is our magic floating paper clip. Then we're going to try our penny surface tension experiments. Next we're going to move on to our magic pepper experiment. And finally we're going to end with our color bursting milk experiment. Our first experiment today is our magic paper clip experiment, which is going to show us a little bit about surface tension and how it works. For this experiment, we'll need some water, a large bowl, and some paper clips. So this experiment's pretty simple. You're going to need to get your bowl of water, which we've got right there, and a paper clip. So the first thing I want to test is, does a paper clip normally sink in water or float? I'm going to guess it probably sinks based on my previous experience with paper clips. But let's test it. It sunk right to the bottom. So this experiment's called the magic floating paper clip. But it's not really magic, it's science. And it's the science of surface tension, which allows paperclip to float on the top of water using surface tension. So what we're going to do next is take a paperclip that's bent, and we're going to lower another paperclip in the water very carefully so that we don't break the surface tension of the water. So I'm going to place this paperclip very carefully on the top of this paperclip and lower it into our water. I did it. All right, so you can't see it right now, but it's actually floating right in the top of the water. So I'm gonna bring the camera over so you can see it. So as you can see, that paper clip is floating right on the top of the water. Pretty amazing. So let's see if I can add another one. I'm do it very carefully and not break the surface tension. There we go. So now I've got two paper clips floating on the top of the water. Let me see if I can add a third. All right, here we go, let's see. All right, there we go, I got three paper clips all on the top of the water. So they're all being held up there by surface tension. So if I were to touch the top of any of these, do you think that they'll, they'll fall in? Let's test it. Yep. So as soon as I broke the surface tension, they all fell right into the water. So, how exactly does surface tension work? Well, water is a molecule composed of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms, or H2O. Water molecules are polar, meaning one end is more positively charged and the other is more negatively charged. Because of these charges and the polarity of water, water is very cohesive, meaning water molecules are attracted to each other. The cohesive force between water molecules is known as hydrogen bonding. In this illustration, you can see hydrogen bonding in action. The red atoms are oxygen atoms and they are negatively charged. The blue atoms are hydrogen atoms and they are positively charged. The positively charged hydrogen atoms of one water molecule are attracted to the negatively charged oxygen atoms of another, leading to water molecules being arranged in this grid-like structure. At the surface of water, there are fewer water molecules to cling to since there is air above. This means the water molecules that do touch each other uh, side to side and below cling to each other more closely. This cohesive force results in the strong surface tension of water. In fact, other than mercury, water has the greatest surface tension of any liquid. So now we're ready for our next experiment. For this next series of experiments, you should gather some water, pennies, droppers, plastic cups, isopropyl alcohol, and some dish soap. So in this experiment, we're going to get some pennies and a dropper and some water to start. So I've got my penny. So the first thing we're going to do is see how many drops of water I can get onto this penny before it collapses. Let's see. One. Two, 
three, four, five, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Ooh, thirty-two. So now that you've tested water, let's test something different. Right here I've got some isopropyl alcohol. You may or may not have this at your house. One, two, three, four, five, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Oh, and it collapsed at around sixteen drops. So now we've tested water, which held thirty-two, and isopropyl alcohol, which held sixteen. Next, let's test some soapy water. So what you're going to want to do is get some of that original water you were using, pour it into another cup, and then we're going to get some dish soap, some Dawn dish soap, and add it. Then we're going to stir it with our stirrer of science, as Bill Nye would say, until it's nice and mixed up. So now let's see how many drops of soapy water we can add to the top of this penny. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Oh, went to nineteen. So not as many as water, but a little bit more than isopropyl alcohol. So next I've set up two pennies, and one of them I'm going to put regular water on, and the other one I'm going to put soapy water on. And we're going to compare. Alright, ready to do some regular water. One, two, three, four, five, six, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 37, 38, 39, 40. So I've got 40 drops of regular water on our penny over here. So on this penny, we're going to add some soapy water and see how many we can add. Okay, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, oh, and it fell off the side, 15. So this one's at 40, and this one's at 15. So what do you think will happen if I were to put some soapy water onto this penny that's got all of that beautiful regular water on it? Do you think it'll collapse? Let's test. All right, ready, set, one drop, oh, and it collapsed immediately. So what just happened was the soap broke the surface tension of that water and it made it collapse. In this experiment, you can see just how strong the surface tension of water is compared to isopropyl alcohol and soapy water. Adding soap to water disrupts the surface tension of that water. Soap is a surfactant, a substance which tends to reduce the surface tension of a liquid in which it is dissolved. The term surfactant is short for surface active agent. Some common materials which contain surfactants are detergents, soap, shampoo, conditioner, and even shaving cream. So now we're ready for our next experiment. For this experiment, you'll want some water, dish soap, a plate, pepper, Q-tips, and some paper towels. So now we're ready for our magic pepper experiment. So in this experiment, you're gonna need some pepper, and a plate of water, and a Q-tip, and some dish soap. So what we're gonna do is add some dish soap to one of these cups. Just a little bit. And then what we're gonna do, put these aside for a second, is put some pepper on the top of our water. So here we have our plate of pepper. As you can see, the pepper is floating on the top of the water because of surface tension. What we're going to do next is get our cup that has soap in it and our Q-tip, and we're going to put our Q-tip into that cup and get a little bit of that soap on the end. 
we're going to very carefully lower the Q-tip into the middle of the water and see what happens. Whoa! Pretty cool. Let's see if we can do it again. There we go. Let's see if we can do it one more time. Oh, yeah. Let's see how many times we can do it. Let's get a little bit more soap. Can we do it over here? Nope. So if you've done it too many times, we've already broken the surface tension so much that it's not going to work anymore. So what just happened? In this experiment, we introduced soap into water. As we discovered before, soap is a surfactant, which disrupts the surface tension of water. The pepper rests comfortably on the top of the water due to the surface tension of water. When soap is introduced, the soap molecules repel the water, rapidly carrying our pepper as it moves away from the soap. So now we're ready for our last experiment. For this experiment, you'll want to gather some dish soap, a plate, Q-tips, paper towels, non-skim milk, and some food coloring. So this last experiment is our color bursting milk experiment. What we're going to do first is pour some milk on a plate. Next we're going to add some food coloring to the top of the milk. And I have some green, blue, and yellow. So here you can see our milk and food coloring. What we're going to do next is take our cup with our soap in it, and we are going to put our Q-tip into the soap. And finally, what we're going to do is place our Q-tip very carefully into the center of that milk and see what happens. Whoa! Color burst. <laughs> And you can see it keeps going as that soap contacts the milk. So what just happened? In this experiment, you're actually seeing a couple of different things. First, you're seeing the water and milk being disrupted by soap. Soap breaks the surface tension of water, and milk is mostly water. However, milk is not just water. It also contains vitamins, minerals, proteins, and tiny droplets of fat suspended in solution. The secret to the color bursting action that continues and the second important element of this chemical reaction is the way soap interacts with the fat molecules in milk. Soap molecules have two ends. One end is hydrophobic, meaning it doesn't like being near water, and the other is hydrophilic, meaning it doesn't mind being near water. When soap comes into contact with oils and fats, there is a rapid realignment of the soap molecules so that their hydrophobic ends point inward and attach to the oil or fat molecules and their hydrophilic ends point outward towards the surrounding water. So when you touch the soap to the milk, the surface tension is broken, causing that sudden outward motion, and then the molecules of fat bend, roll, twist, and turn as the soap surrounds the fat and milk, all the while carrying our food coloring in all directions. That's all the science experiments we have for today. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you learned a little bit about water and surface tension and soap and how it interacts with oils and fats. Bye for now.